<laughs> Let's go! <laughs> ah, thank you. Oh, lol, another Zammy Spear. Hey, 100 Krill kills. Heck yeah. So if we look at our Krill log, we got 113 kills. Top legs, two spears. And two pieces of War Priest. It's all right. It's all right. What's up, gamers? I'm Coach, and this is my Hardcore Iron Man. The end goal of this account is to try and survive to the front page of the Hardcore Iron Man achievement high scores. Making things more interesting, these high scores are bugged. Dead hardcores are given a random rune score, so if we ever lose our hardcore status, we lose our place on the high scores. To make it to the front page, we're going to have to take on nearly every achievement in the game, including some absolutely insane combat achievements. So, to get the hardcore ready to take on anything and everything, our first priority on the account will be completing all the quests, mini quests, and area tasks in the game. This should give us access to everything we need to take on the real challenges later, and will encourage me to get a solid base of skills along the way. So, last episode, we got 99 Herb Warren Hunter. Completed the City of Centerston, unlocking anime dead, and managed to snag a couple of nice upgrades along the way. In this episode, I want to start making a push to prepare the account for necromancy by collecting some subjugation gear and write out some more combat 99 so I can really focus in on the skill when it releases in episode 17. Look, I'll catch up on the editing one day, I swear. I swear. I'd also like to start making some more progress on area tasks and get cracking on some of the larger quest lines for the massive XP rewards they offer. Before getting stuck into the serious stuff though, I want to knock out two small goals. Firstly, I want to get back to fish flingers to finish off my fishing outfit for the beautiful plus 5% XP boost when fishing. And with just boots to go, I need to play a couple of games to finish the outfit. Oh! This is it! The lucky last piece! Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. The second goal is unlocking the full sous chef outfit. This one is a random reward from the Gnome Kitchen minigame, which says you're cooking up some gnome delicacies and delivering them to hungry gnomes all across Gelenor. First delivery, and we get a sous chef jacket! First go! The full outfit with hat hat on provides a plus 6% XP boost to cooking and a 5% chance to double cooked food. There it is! We got our sous chef toque hat on! Add to toque! Oh, you love to see it! As another skilling outfit completed. That's two skilling outfits completed today. The fishing one and a cooking one. The first item on our questing agenda for this episode is the Void Knight series. And a bit of a throwback to episodes 11 and 13, the final quest in this series unlocks a special match in the Dominion Tower that's required for Dominion Mines. But now that we've expanded the scope of this season to include area tasks, we'll unlock Dominion Mines as part of completing the desert achievement tasks down the road. So I'm actually going to forget about this goal entirely for now, knowing that we'll complete it passively along the way. Anyways, we have three quests to do here. Quiet Before the Storm, Avoid Dance, and The Void Stares Back. This series has us chasing down an escaped pest, which it turns out has been captured by the Black Knights to produce a toxic sludge to poison all of Gelenor. This discovery leads us down an even deeper rabbit hole of evil plots, culminating in an epic battle with the Pest Queen herself. Level 83 smithing out of that? Heck yeah! That is the Void Knight quest series done! And we are at 303 quest points. The plan over the next little bit is gonna get a little bit interesting, right? I wanna knock out the Fremenic series, because there's some freaking huge XP rewards and stuff out of that, so that's probably gonna be the next big quest line we take on. It's also gonna mean doing some Fremi hard achievements, so there's gonna be quite a bit. I also wanna knock out Recipe for Disaster, because that has been sitting in my in progress here for quite a while, along with the Fremenic Isles. Dimension of Disaster will deal with another day. I might also go through and finish up building my fort. I've done the quests already. There's not too, too much more to do. I might be able to upgrade my kitchen one more time. Also, I need to raise my cooking up a little bit because one thing I really want to get knocked out quite soon is the Sears Elite Diaries. And basically, the only thing I need for that is 80 cooking and 85 fletching. So actually, our next stream, we might do the Sears Elite Diaries. Because having Enhanced Excalibur upgraded would be... Well, getting Enhanced Excalibur and upgrading it would be freaking dope. 
I was Fletching before it, and I figured I'd do a tiny bit more at the end here to get us 85 Fletching, which is the level required for the Sears Elite Diaries. It's pretty exciting. I'm glad to have that knocked out. So one thing I've been doing on the sly is the familiarization weekly. It's pretty simple. You've just got to track down Pick and Mix at a small summoning obelisk somewhere in the world. Once inside, you get turned into a little familiar, and you've just got to run around and pick up these raw shards here. As you run around, you've got to watch out for other familiars, which may siphon you. You get shown which ones are a problem in the top left. As you'll be running around quite a bit in the instance, I'd highly recommend going to the saltwater bath in Ooglog to get the infinite run energy. The main rewards for this weekly D&D is either triple charm drop rate for a short period of time after the event, or a box of summoning supplies, which if you don't already own a full outfit, will contain one unique piece of the shaman's outfit, which is what we're after here. This is actually our sixth time doing this weekly distraction and diversion, so we should be finishing up our outfit here with the shaman's headdress add-on. Putting the add-on on the headdress here allows us to claim 300 spirit shards and teleport to Bogrog three times per day. And while we're in the outfit, we have a 5% chance to save a charm while we're making pouches. Another skilling outfit set completed. This little tab starting to look pretty solid right now. Holy moly, new PR 141, 51 seconds, what the hell? Let's click loot. What do we get? Do we re-roll it? Yeah, go on in one as well. And then we re-rolled it into worse loot. It is what it is. So you might remember last episode we pushed to 97 archaeology, falling just shy of the 98 required for persistent rage and the 99 for bait and switch. Well, this episode I remembered I can easily just banner boost for a plus two in archaeology. So I did that and I've gone and gathered a death mask from the Orphan Dig site to give to Bob here for the cat's paw relic to unlock bait and switch. I also picked up the two Hellfire guitars to give to Dagon the Gatekeeper and the Infernal Source for the Rings of Razzalade to unlock Persistent Rage. So, what do these relics do? Well, bait and switch cooks fish as you catch them, albeit at 50% of the standard cooking XP. Persistent Rage is one of my favourite relics, making you actually gain adrenaline when you're out of combat. I think I'm going to have to deactivate Shadow's Grace Relic right here and now so I can put Persistent Rage on. Okay, 88 crafting coming in, just out of getting some hearts here for harmonic dust. I need 4,000 so that I can upgrade that dragon hatchet I got last episode into a crystal hatchet because I want to get cracking on the grove and I figured that if I'm going to work away at maxing out the grove in the fort and getting my Amcando hatchet, it'll be a lot quicker and easier if I do it with a crystal hatchet. So probably check back a little bit later on when I hit 4,000 dust and we can actually make that hatchet. It has been a hot minute, but I've finished gathering the 4,000 dust required to make my crystal hatchet. I'm gonna do this by talking to Lady Ethel with the dust and dragon hatchet in our inventory. And there we have it, my crystal hatchet. Let's go augment this bad boy. All right, so I'm just chucking Prosper and Hone 3 on it for now. I was really hoping I'd be able to get at least Hone 4, but I ran out of components, so this is gonna have to do for now. And with that made, I can do one last siphon on my dragon hatchet for 83 invention here. I realise I can make a wood box, so I'm going to whip one of those up very quickly right now and upgrade it as much as I can. Here's the base wood tier. Upgrade it to, to oak and willow, tea, maple, acadia, and some mahogany, then you, and finally the magic wood box. To start building the grove in my fort so I can get my Imkando hatchet underway, I need to start by talking to Okia, who asks me to talk to Bill about building a wall on the east side of the fort to protect the area for the grove. After that, Oak asks us to build in the tier 1 cabin, which gives us access to the base facilities of the grove. Now I think I need to get cracking on a gate so I don't need to take the long way around. That's the gate built. Let's see about upgrading to the tier 2 grove. There's 84 construction coming in. That is the tier 2 grove completed. I think I'm just going to whip up the tier 3 grove real quick. <laughs> There we go. That is the tier 3 grove completed, and now we can collect Encanto fragments from the bird nests we collect while we're cutting. And uh, hopefully I can ditch this crystal hatchet at some point. I think I'm going to leave the fort stuff here for now, and uh, we'll come back to finish the kitchen and the chapel in a bit. The next day I had Krill for my Reaper task, and with this episode taking place just before the release of Necromancy, I was pretty keen to pick up as much subjugation gear as possible, as it's just been announced that the subjugation will be needed for making the Necromancy armors when the skill releases. So instead of just doing 12 kills, I decided to stay for the whole hour and see what I can get. No! Shut up! Let's go! We'll take a gun of subjugation, don't mind if I do so! There we go! That just got a slayer level 89 as well, finishing that Reaper task. Oh, 
freeze towel! If I can get the full set of this together, then I can start disassembling it for freeze any comps. Hey! God Sword Shard 2! Ha <laughs> ha! The drops are rolling in this hour. No! Shut up! We got another God Sword Shard! Bro! It's a dupe! No! No, I'm off this game! Yo, I was asking for a Steam Battle Staff before the hour started, right? There we go. All right, here it comes. Subjugation Hood. Oh, we got scammed again! No, I take it back. We got a War Priest Curious. Fine! Fine, but it was from a minion. It didn't really count. Uh... No! God Sword Shard 3! Let's go! Oh! we do at our Krill Toots Ross hour. This was our third hour, up to 176 kills. I feel like that was good. That was like 63 kills this hour. I feel like I started at 113. So that was definitely our best hour. New PB of 19.2 seconds. That's not too shabby. And we picked up two God Sword Shard 2s, a God Sword Shard 3, a Gown of Subjugation. We didn't get an hourly Zamorak Spear this hour, so I'm going to have to get two next hour to make up for that. We did, however, pick up a Steam Battle Staff and three pieces of War Priest. So, as soon as I get the cape, I can start disassembling those for my Zami components, and we will be a very happy gamer. I have a funny feeling that we unlocked a little something something with that Krill Hour. We get the Adrenaline Potion Refresh at Wars Crystal because we passed 2,000 boss kills. Oh, how huge is that? So I mentioned earlier in the episode that I wanted to complete this Sears Village Achievement set, but I need a day to cooking first. Well, anyway, I found out you can just boost the cooking level, so I decided to get stuck in. The easy achievements were nothing special, and the rewards were pretty mediocre. So, uh, we got 1k XP lamp and any skill over 30, and the CS headband 1, which acts as a dim light source when carried, and provides double logs when cutting normal trees if worn. After the diaries, the coal trucks will also hold an additional 28 coal, and you can claim 30 noted flax from Jeffrey each day. There we go! CS headband 1, and an antique lamp. Let's throw this into prayer for a free thousand prayer XP. The medium tasks weren't much harder. The worst task was gathering 1,000 archery tickets at the Ranger Guild, but even that wasn't too bad. Alrighty, I think that, is that the last one? It is. Alright, let's go see Stankers and get our reward. Upon completion, we're rewarded with a 5k XP lamp and CS Headband 2, which provides a few minor upgrades over the base headband. The Sears Hards were next, and these are where the rewards start getting good. The XP lamp might just be for 10k, but this set also awards an enhancement to the Excalibur Sword, giving it a special attack that can be activated once every 5 minutes to heal the player for 20% of their maximum life points over 21 seconds, which is actually pretty huge. You also get more daily flags and more storage in the coal trucks. I just did content. I think that is our completion of the hard tasks. So let's go see Sir K in the Camelot Castle to upgrade our headband. So I I grabbed my rewards and it was on to the elite tasks. Uh, these tasks have significantly higher stat requirements and are a lot more in depth than the previous tiers, but we got there in the end. Hey, there we go! I see it's elite done! Finally! Okay, where do I get this from? Hello, Sir K. I've completed all the elite tasks in the Sears Village set. May I have a reward? For completing the elite tasks, the healing of our enhanced Excalibur was doubled to 40% of our max hit points over 42 seconds. Enchanted Bolts have a 2% increased chance to proc their special effect. Jeffrey will now give 200 flax per day, and the first 200 coal used on the coal trucks each day will be banked automatically. And we also got some very tasty XP lamps. How much prayer XP do we get out of this? Can we get a level? Probably not. That's only 25k. This is 30k though. Does it keep getting better? That's 30k. Oh my gosh, this is so much free prayer XP though. Not! Wait. No, it was a level! It got us to level 88 prayer! So I found a solution to not having 85 instruction to make the kitchen. I just accidentally made another tier 2 kitchen instead of a tier 2 chapel. So I'm definitely going to have... 85 and be able to make my tier 3 kitchen after this. Easy peasy. Just accidentally build the wrong thing. I'm not even worried about the wasted Acadia frames. There's 85. <laughs> Fish gold. Tier 3 kitchen unlocked. 
So we've got the tier 2 chapel and we're just finishing off the tier 3 kitchen here for 86 construction, which is pretty nice. This provides access to a soup cooking station and a 5% increase to base cooking XP in the kitchen, along with the 3% burn reduction from the tier 2 kitchen. I think that is all the fort building that I have the construction level for at the moment. Uh, but I think that our fort is coming along rather nicely now and it might be time to put on a sous chef outfit and test this kitchen out. There's level 79 cooking, our first cooking level in our tier 3 kitchen at the port. I've still got quite a bit of raw food, so I'll just be cooking this up throughout the rest of the episode, and I'll check it back in a little bit later on, just to see what cooking level we end up getting to. We're just getting kill count, and we got our War Priest of Zamorak. Okay, dope. Let's disassemble that and start collecting the Zami comps. So the plan for today, chat, is uh, with necromancy coming out very soon, the XP rates at ED3 trash runs is about to get a bit of a balance out, so it's not going to be as ridiculously broken. Uh, so we're going to take advantage of it being still kind of ridiculously broken, and we're going to boost it. Cruel Reaper actually kind of ties into necro prep because. We need some subjugation. Way level 95 defense, bro, and combat level 132. 200 krill kills. That feels good, man. I haven't had any uniques this hour. What the hell? There's something wrong with the boss. We just had our first ever hour at krill where we didn't get trophies. I get Aiki. Well, uh, how do groups work again? Always forget. Aiki doke. See if we can't get ourselves. 99 defense, eh? There's 95 constitution coming in. First level of the trashies. Hey! 96 defense in the bag. Three levels to go. Oh, so good. I just need to siphon my blip really quickly. 88 and Benjamin coming in. Yeah, I need to siphon me top. Hang on. Level 89 and Benjamin. Let's go. 97 in the defense skill coming in there. Okay, I'm not Kill me, please. <laughs> 96 constitution along with combat level 133. Way there we go. Level 98. We are so close. So close. I love the XP here. Gonna be sad to see it go when Necromancy releases. Nah, it's not. I have to actually play the game instead of just cheesing it. You know what's funny is by the time this YouTube video releases, Necromancy's probably already gonna be out, and they're gonna be like, oh my god, coach, you should have you should have maxed combat before Necro at ED3, but you didn't, did ya? And then this video is gonna come out and it's gonna be like, yeah, we did. <gasps> Man, we just got level 99 defense! Let's go! Man, that feels real good. That feels real good. All right, let's go buy this cape, man. We, we buy it from a guy in Lumberge, right? What is that cape you're wearing? Oh, it's a skill cape of defense. Can I have one, please? I have very good defenses. Put the hood on it. Oh, shall we? Shall we do the emote? Let's do the emote. Let's do the emote. Oh, he's got a shield. <laughs> one more time. One more time. One more. One more time. One more time. Let's go. Let's go! Look at that! Our fifth 99 on the account is defense. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. Well, gamers, I'm actually going to cut this episode right here. It's getting quite long already, and I've got a lot still to edit in. Keep an eye out. Part 2 will be coming out very shortly. I've already done most of the work on it. I uh, got all the voiceover and everything done. It's ready to roll. The clips are all pretty much trimmed down. We just got to do that final edit, put it all together. Could be another week, uh, but it is going to come out a heck of a lot faster than the first half of the episode. That is for sure. So stay tuned. If you enjoyed the video and want to see what happens next, drop a like and subscribe, and I will see you all hopefully very shortly for the next installment. Okay, bye. Bye. I miss you. I miss you. Bye. 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 We'll do we'll do quests proper on our next stream. Next stream will be real quests for re questsies for realsies. I'm gonna check the kettle, cause I just disassembled my fancy Excalibur.